you made it to level two, deeper questions leading to deeper answers. I'm Tomas Garza, and I'm here to help you decide to transform. I'll be setting the pace for the process to support your unfolding. Learn and commit to a practice that brings simplicity and then awareness of what is ready to be released. Join me now and allow the experience of a deeper sense of love. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Decide to Transform. I'm your host, Tomas Garza, and joining me today as my very special guest from Michigan is Sally De La Rosa. Now, Sally is a psychic medium, light worker, a Reiki master, teacher, and a business owner who is very busy, and her business, by the way, is booming. And now, Sally has a lifetime of healing gifts and experience and offers these days a wide variety of healing tools for your mind, body, and spirit. And there's so much going on. Her center in Michigan is very busy. Sally is a regular contributor to meditations, daily meditations on the worldwide platform Enlightened World Network, where we actually met. So Sally, this is going to be a lot of fun. I've been looking forward to this. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. I have been looking forward to this too. Um, as a matter of fact, I tried to hop on an hour early. <laughs> oh. So I was excited. <laughs> well, this is good. So one would rather be early than an hour late. Yes, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Okay, well, now this is a lot of fun. And as, as I just mentioned, we met when I was hosting a meditation. You, you run a, a number of meditations periodically mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. Enlightened World Network. And it intrigued me that you had so many different things going on in healing modalities. Now, is there anything that I didn't mention just now in the intro that oh. you're doing as well? Oh my gosh. Kind of, yes. Oh, I love it. I, <laughs> I love also it. am a past life regressionist. So um, I just finished up a, a session prior to this. Um, and I'm actually, those have really jumped in people really wanting this service. So um, if you've ever wondered what past life regression was like, it is just like having a conversation. It is a nap. If you could cross a nap and a conversation together, kind of what it's like. Um, so nothing really to be afraid of, but, you know, it helps people figure things out in their life. Okay. Yeah. Well, I love the image of crossing a nap with a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. So now this is in addition to all of the services that, that oh, we yeah. mentioned here in the intro. So what intrigues me the most is that these are things that you've been doing your whole life. So at mm -hmm. what point in your life did you realize that you were a healer? Oh, gosh, through a big, um, I guess, I came to an acceptance, a point of acceptance. And um, I lost my sister, it was actually oh. a five month period where I had lost my dog, my father, and my sister all within five months. And so it was just like one thing, one blow right after another. And um, I'm a firm believer that a lot of gifts are born from tragedy. And so me going through such a hard thing, my sister was always very accepting of her gifts. And I kind of ran from them because I started right out of the gates with um, having death dreams. So dreams that I would dream that somebody in my family would pass away and within 24 hours they would. So I wanted nothing to do with it. And after my sister passed away, I kind of stepped into it to pay homage to her, to kind of see what she was all about and what her life was about. Um, and though she never went very far in it, um, she never had that confidence to step into that light. Um, but she was still very accepting. And um, I've never been sorry that I did this. I stepped into this light because uh, it hasn't stopped yet. I haven't stopped growing. We keep expanding more and more um, as humans and as, you know, at the center as well. Yeah. And so there's nothing to be sorry for. Okay. Well, so 
how old were you when all of these events took place? You lost your sister, your dad, and your dog within a short period of time. I was 50. You were 50. Now, I can trace my gifts back to when I was two. Hmm. Um, I can go back and memories back to then. And I can um, remember things that I had did that I now I say, aha, I get it. Um, like I had a friend that I would meet with every day. Um, my placement in the family, as far as birth, um, left me home during the day with just my Tia every afternoon when everybody else went to school. And so I would take over the upstairs whole floor. It was mine. And I ruled mm. every room. And every day in my mom and dad's room, this old man would meet me there and he would never say anything, but he was just there. And um, he would hang out for a couple hours. And now skipping ahead, my gosh, 50 years, roughly 45, 50 years. Um, my daughter hooked me up with Ancestry.com. Oh, okay. And so I started to go through our families and I found a bunch of pictures from way back before I was even born. And there was this man that would meet with me. And as it turns out, it was my mother's father whom I've never had a grandparent in my lifetime. Okay. Um, they were all pretty much gone by the time I was born. I had one left that I met when I was seven, but she passed away that night. So I got to know her for 15 minutes, roughly. Mm. Um, but I was hanging out with my grandfather, who was already deceased, and I didn't know it. I didn't know that who this who it was. Um, so it started there, but then it skips up forward to 15 when the death dream started. Okay. You know, and that was a bit rough at that time. You know, what 15 year old wants to deal with that kind of stuff? You know, so I just kind of shoved it all under a rug and said, no more. I, I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. okay. And then 50. All right. So that, that's quite a period of time then, 35 years. Uh, how frequently would these, would these uh, gifts or, or whatever you'd like to call them, all of these experiences, how frequently during that 35 year period did they press at you saying, uh, <clears throat> It came like a roller coaster ride. Okay. Much like it does now, kind of up and down and up and down. And yeah. All right. And then let's fast forward 50. And what happened? What's significant about that? Oh, wow. Um, I don't know what it was. I just felt like this was the time, divine timing. I've learned that this is what it was, divine timing. Um, and I think I was better able to handle everything. Um, and it was a lot because I'm not one that transitions smoothly. I'm not that lucky. I, uh, it's rough for me. So, um, I'm kind of like being shoved onto a roller coaster ride again. And then they seem to want to send me over hot coals and set me on fire and I'm just, I'm a mess for these things. And so when the big ones come anyway, the little ones, not so bad. Um, but when, when those big ones come and there's a big push forward, I usually don't, don't fare too well. I kind of okay. go off the grid for a while and just lay low and pay attention to my own energy um, the best I can. Okay. Well, so what has helped you the most to get through these periods of resistance? Gosh, paying attention to my vibrations. Okay. However you are vibrating, you are going to look for somebody that's going to vibrate as high or higher. We're not attracted to the lower vibrations. We're attracted to higher vibrations. Um, and so whenever we begin to transition, we go to, basically we go to the light. We go to that light that we're drawn to. And, um, you know, I've learned that in this time that we do this, we also go through several teachers that help us along our path. And so when that teacher finishes their time with us, that light will dim between the two. And we know that we're looking for a higher vibrating light and we just, we find it. Mm -hmm. um, chances are you've found it before you 
leave the first teacher or the second teacher. I think I've gone through five, five so far, I think. Okay. So, so who have these five teachers been? Oh my gosh. Oh, Cass Hillard. She's a, a local lady who she used to live in town here and had a spiritual shop um, where um, I was introduced to her as somebody that could help me. And she understood everything I was going through and got me onto my path of gaining some training so I could learn how to control or better use the gifts. And then from there, it was uh, Lee Hopkins and Echo, uh, psychic medium, Echo Bodine, um, through Viva Institute, who I highly recommend. They are amazing. Um, and then I went to Katori Thomas, um, and she's off Facebook pretty much, but I found her light to be what I needed. Um, and then uh, there was our wonderful Terry Angel. Mm -hmm. And from there, I'm kind of like, I almost feel as if now I've become that person that people are looking for to help them go get through their path. So I'm pretty sure there's somebody lingering out there um, in the universe somewhere for me. I just haven't quite found them yet. And so I'm right now it's spending time with me, getting to know mm -hmm. me and uh, moving forward that way. Okay, so right now, would you uh, characterize this as one of the, your transitional periods? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we've got, yeah, it definitely is. And there's a lot going on. And yeah, the, I'm going, I'm in that moment of releasing some old negative things, you know, that um, I kind of call them scar tissues because I've been through this release many times. However, sure. they kind of want us to get rid of that scar tissue too. They don't want us to hold that either. So that's what I'm kind of, I'm digging deep, digging deep. Okay. So if you don't mind sharing, what does digging deep look like for you? Because it's vastly different for, for different people. Yeah. Well, for me, it's kind of moody. <laughs> I'll admit that. <laughs> All right. Kind of moody. So I kind of stay, I try to stay away from Facebook as much as I can oh. um, for that moment. Mm -hmm. um, until at least I can gain my, my sea legs, you know, and mm -hmm. kind of get back up on my feet. Um, but um, it's a time of, of reflecting and recognizing. And if you can reflect and recognize, you're going to have a little bit easier time with it. So um, it's, it's acceptance too, accepting what it is that you are reflecting and what it is that you are going through and experiencing. You have to be accepting of it and just meditate. Um, do not ever be afraid to go off grid. I do that from time to time. And okay. um, sometimes I just hop on Facebook to put a couple of posts out and then leave for a few hours and then come back and put a few posts out and then leave for a few hours and telltale sign when I'm going through something like that is when I do this. Okay. Well, I mean, I've, I've noticed a few of those Facebook posts, but um, I, I have no idea whether somebody, the casual observer has no idea whether somebody's on Facebook 24 seven or whether they're just yeah. popping, popping in or out. So when, when you go off grid, do you go off grid for long periods of time then? Um, no, right now it's pretty much just a few hours at a time where okay. I just you know, I'm going to go and do me and mm -hmm. kind of get myself back together again before I become, you know, that Facebook person or presence again. Okay, right. Well, and it sounds like you're in a very different situation now as opposed to the past because people are coming to you um, at for, for work, for answers. And oh, yeah. yeah, and how has this materially changed everything for you now to be the one who's oh doing the work. Oh my gosh. It has made the world of difference within our lives. Complete, complete turnaround. Um, number one, you really do not hang on to any anger issues. You do not. <laughs> that is the first thing I think that goes out the door is any type of anger issues. And mm -hmm. I've, 
I have my dad's temper. And so I did anyway. And so I've had to learn to work through this um, and kind of put everything at bay. Um, but when you do this, when you step into this light, it is an actual life choice. It is a life choice. You are choosing to begin your path living this way. And so um, doing so, we've learned to give everything up to the universe and to God and to spirit and however you want to address them. Um, we give everything up to them. There's not a whole lot of worrying anymore. I can't say there's none because I still have that human side and we have to live that. Yeah. Um, but there's not a whole lot of worrying over anything anymore. Um, whatever we seem to need, spirit makes sure somehow that it's there, proving that they're listening to us all the time. Mm -hmm. um, number one, there's only been one other person in my family that's ever owned their own business, and that was my father. And okay. so this is, you know, pretty much not really heard of in our family. Um, but here we are. And we came into this, we followed spirit's guidance. I had a two year horrendous, really long um, awakening. Okay. And during this awakening, which was, like I said, I don't travel through these big ones very well. And through this one, I also had a negative entity attached to me as well for six mm -hmm. months of that time. So, and I wasn't aware of that until somebody, another Reiki master, um, an elder Native American woman, came in and she seen what was going on and she knew. And so um, once that was removed, it took a few months of kind of recovery time. Um, and then I woke up, um, it was probably late April of 2020. And I heard spirit and I kid you not, spirit comes to you sometimes in very corny ways, very, very corny. Mm -hmm. And they told me, if you build it, they will come. And so I just giggled and I'm like, really? That's how you're going to come to me this morning. I was having coffee. Um, and so I was listening to this message and I'm like, okay, I know, I understand. Put it in my pocket. It may not make sense today, but maybe tomorrow it will. Tomorrow morning rolls around and Tony wakes up and says, let's go look for retail space vowing to never do this unless it was in the exact prime location it had to have good foot traffic and be center of downtown and yeah um and everything had to be right and so we went looking for retail space and we found one place there was one place open for rent down here and the rent was kind of high you know we we could do it without the you know issues but with the pandemic, we were unsure of what life was going to deal us. So we were very careful with the money that was coming in. And so we didn't want to pay the $1,800 to $2,000 a month. So we were like, oh, not right now. But um, Tony prayed for it to come in around 1000 And I prayed for it to come in around 800 mm. And it came in at 900 right in between both of us. So um, it was just like, okay, it's perfect. But when we talked to the man, he kind of clued us in that um, he had a verbal agreement oh. with somebody else oh. and he had to honor that. And we're like, okay, we understand. Hung up the phone and I looked at Tony and I said, he's calling us back. This is where believing in spirit really comes in. <laughs> and so the next morning he calls back. And he says, I just can't get you ladies out of my mind. For some reason, I can't get you out of my mind. And, but I have this verbal agreement. So I'm like, okay, you know, we understand that. And just keep us in mind if anything happens. And so she hung up the phone. And I said, he's calling us back. And then within two hours, he called back. <laughs> and he said, okay, I can get you in to see it. So if you want to get in to see it, we can do it in 10 minutes. We come in to see it. I went in the basement here and I'm not a basement person. They just creep me out. And Allegan has a history. And I'll tell you that in a second. It's really it's short, but it's really interesting. So I went down in the basement and it was loaded with angels. They were okay. just all over down there. And they were telling me 
that they were using the basements around these areas as sort of their resting places. Um, and, you know, while they did what they were here to do. And so, um, and I was met by Gabriel and Michael and Metatron and, you know, um, just a slew of them. And I wanted it from that point on. It's like, this is the place. And so I told Tony he's going to give it to us. And he did. We got it that night and was able to start doing the renovations and everything within a few days. Oh, and wow. the, all the ducks, when spirit wants you to move, trust me, all your ducks are going to line up in a row. They're going to leave you no choice. The, that's true about the leaving you no choice. <laughs> yeah. oh, um, the history of this place. Oh, yeah. The city of Allegan, the downtown area, actually burned down in the late 1800s, early 1900s, somewhere in oh, there. That time oh, wow. Frame. Okay. And so I'm thinking it was be before 1854. Hmm. Um, and instead of bulldozing everything down and building new, they built on top of the old city. Okay. And so our basements are actually the original city of Allegan. Oh, really? All right. And so, yeah, right around hmm. between 5.30 and 7 o'clock at night here, um, we start to hear the city below us come to life again with spirit. Mm. And so we hear all sorts of noises. Okay. Uh, every day? Oh, yes. Every uh, day. <laughs> now, did these continue throughout the night? Um, I don't know. We have not stayed down here. So far, they continue to about 10.30 at night, and then we leave and... Um, we've actually been told to get out of here by spirit. They told us to go home. So <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. Time to go. Yeah. All right. Well, they're taking care of you, so you don't overwork yourself. Yes, I think yeah. so. Okay. Well, this is really very, very interesting. Um, and now, now, one of the things that really strikes me that you mentioned a few minutes ago is that there are so many people that may have the same sort of, of gifts. They may have the same sort of experiences, but the words that you used were they lack confidence to come forward with that. So uh, have you met a number of these people? Yes. Okay. Terry Angel told me this in the very beginning of opening this place. She said, you're going to be surprised at how many people sit in front of you that have something going on. Uh -huh. they have, they've got something going on. Yeah. And so every person that I have met with so far that has sat in front of me has absolutely fit that bill and has something going on. They are awakening and needing that help and needing that guidance. And that is actually what led me into my Monday evening classes. Um, it started out as a paid class. Mm -hmm. And spirit quickly said, no, 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 no. More people need this. So absolutely open yourself up for free at this time and bring these people in to help make a difference in their life. Okay. And so the class every, it seems like every couple of weeks, it's growing in size mm. and people just join us and we, we learn everything everything so we go through i mean every bit of spiritual life that there is from all sorts of gifts to um tools and uh we do community healings where they get involved as well we do our saturday nights we raise money um, for a local charity um sylvia's place who helps with abused women and families and so every saturday all the donations go to them okay um, but we get we get the class involved and we do sound healing and we do Reiki on each other and um, just everything, everything. Learning uh, tonight is aura and tarot. So <laughs> that's our menu tonight. <laughs> okay. And how long are, are all of these sessions? Um, anywhere from an hour to two hours. Sometimes it's been almost three. Depends on how involved we get into it. Okay. Yeah. Well, and uh, it doesn't surprise me that, that Terry Angel told you that you'd see a lot of people with things going on. So what, uh, what variety of things do you see going on? Oh my gosh, lots of gifts that are opening up. 
Okay. People are hearing things and seeing things that they're just <laughs> not sure that they're not, um, they're not making the connection or not believing what they're seeing. Yeah. So that, um, that hardest lesson to learn, trust. Mm -hmm. And trusting in yourself seems to be the hardest. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Trusting yourself, forgiving yourself, all of those yeah. can be very, very difficult for people. Now, and since you've been running the, this class, and since you've seen people come with gifts, with all kinds of things going on and, and missing that trust component, have you seen some success stories where people are now leaning into this? Yeah. Yes. Oh, good, yes. good. Absolutely, yes. I see a lot of people that are opening up and becoming more accepting and just kind of going with flow. Okay. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And do you have special special words or special suggestions for people that might be right on the edge? They know that this is going on, but maybe they're reluctant to take that next step. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, well, I don't know if I ever want to label them with a word because... I was also there once, so I try not to, um, sure. but if I had to give them any advice, I would just say, work on the trust. You've, oh, I'm always telling them, you've got this, you've got this. Okay, yeah, yeah, work on the trust. It, it's clearly about allowing, and, and that is, I think, you're, you're nailing it. It's one of the top obstacles, if not the hardest for people is to just allow it all to happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, so you offer a number of different things at the center, including Reiki. Now, one of the things when we were talking earlier before the show began is that there is a raindrop therapy. I don't know if I got that right, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Would you tell us about that? Okay. That is, it's a, technique, a massage type technique with using essential oils and quite a bit of essential oils. I think there's like 14 different oils involved and okay. each one is four drops a piece. So that's quite a bit of oils that you're getting. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all specifically chosen for you, whatever it is that you need. Um, and there's a few of them that totally annihilate pain. Mm. I mean, it's just gone. I've had complete back aches where they, I was not moving very well um, and had them just completely relieved. And um, gosh, it's, it's, it's a form of massage. So you are in um, the massage position. You're basically, um, she has you turn over from one side to another a few times through this. And um, there's light massage involved in it. Not, nothing heavy at all. It's a very light touch massage and it just leaves you in this euphoric, very peaceful um, state of mind. Okay. And um, I know that it's like, it's an hour and a half mm -hmm. session and like 20 minutes of this is for you to be able to get your bearings back and actually begin to sit up and so on. And it can leave you very disoriented, um, kind of dizzy feeling. Um, but you've had a lot of, a lot of energy moved through this and it's actually meant to, um, get your mind and your body to meet. Okay. And it, uh, it's, it's just a wonderful thing to do. It is. Wow. Well, it sounds wonderful and it sounds relaxing. And I know that the listeners are visualizing this and it sounds really actually, actually amazing. I prefer, I mean, I have deep tissue a lot and I have for a long time, for a few years now. Um, and I prefer the raindrop therapy over. Interesting. That. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you get a lot of takers then for the raindrop therapy? That is a new service here. Oh, I like it. A new service. Okay. So there's been a few takers already so far, um, but yep, it's becoming more and more um, 
advertised and so it's getting out there and um, but yeah it's a brand new service within the last couple of weeks Okay. Oh, this is interesting. So this makes the recording of the show quite timely. So tell us then a little bit more about the center. How can people access information about it? What's its name? Those okay. sorts of things. Yeah. Our name is Zen Enlightenment. Mm -hmm. All one word. Um, uh, that just came about by Angel as well. They spoke to me one day and said Zen Enlightenment was the word, the name, and. It, it became that. I changed everything over for that. Um, we have a few Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. um, there's the main Enlightenment group where you go, if you go join that group, you pretty much can keep up to par on anything going on within the center virtually or in person or however it should be. Um, new services being offered as well. We also have a Zen Enlightenment Learning Center where that's where I have invite the students in that are virtual and in person, they get that right to go there and have lifetime access. And um, I do a lot of practices with people getting their gifts to hone in more, um, giving them great practices with things so they can learn what it is that they do and what their gifts are and how to use them properly. Okay. Um, and we invite special guests in to kind of um, sometimes I'll put photos out there for people to read and then I'll invite the owners of the photos to come in and kind of give feedback to the students. Um, and then we have a business page or a business, yeah, a business page on Facebook is Enlightenment Business. And that's where you can see a lot of videos for the store, the center, um, just all of that stuff. And so that's becoming a more active page as well. And um, we are in located in downtown Allegan, Michigan. And you ha we have a website, zenlightenment.live that you can go to, you can meet the team. You can um, comment on there for appointments to be scheduled and so on. I love it, okay. So this is wonderful then. There's a Facebook page, Zenlightenment and, and a group as well, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yes. Zenlightenment, all one word, and of the website Zenlightenment Live. Now, I know that because the world is so interconnected, we're still in the midst of a pandemic. I think people would be really curious to know, as I am, what virtual services you offer through the Zenlightenment Learning Center. Okay. We do. Um, well, the virtual services as I teach, I include those in virtually. So if there's a class or something going on that you want to take, um, we can hook this up virtually as well and invite you in. And, you know, you can associate with all the other class people here, the people are taking the classes. And we okay. have one um, that comes in from India and another that comes in from just outside of London. And um, so, yeah, the virtuals, kind of still taking that slow back road because people just think that you can't learn virtually mm. um, or think that they want to hold on for somebody to come along in person but you can learn well virtually um, so um, but it does we do that there and then um, any other services that we offer virtually as far as the zenlightenment.live or for the business the center here um, as we do reiki um readings of all sorts. I'm also a trans medium. Um, okay. So I do mediumship readings of all sorts and um, tarot readings and there's other tarot readers here as well. Um, so we do a lot of this. Um, it's kind of hard to do the past life regression in person. I, I mean, on virtual, I wish it could be uh, that way, but just a better connection in person. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's wonderful to hear that you have so many services that are available online with, with people traveling less frequently yes. than before. <laughs> but yes. yeah. Well, so this is very, very interesting. Again, for the listeners, it's Zen Lightenment, one word on Facebook as a business page and the Facebook group and Zen Lightenment dot live for the website to get a hold of Sally and anyone connected with the center about services either in person or virtual and this is really wonderful I've learned Sally a great deal from you and this is so much fun to chat with someone who has such experience with 
both allowing and trusting their gifts and not allowing and trusting it. Because I think that everyone that's listening can relate to your experience. So before we wrap up here today, what else would you like to share with the listeners? Oh my gosh. I guess if there was one thing, and I repeat this so often, it's very important, whether you accept your gifts or not to love yourself. This is gonna make the world of difference within your life. And if you are intending on stepping into this life, Um, and making this life path yours, then I hope you come to that realization that you need to take care of yourself first and foremost. And everything else will work itself out. Everything else falls into place, but you have to love yourself enough to go deep, learn to trust, learn to have faith. And oh my gosh, patience. (laughs) Patience is a big one. Yes, that is a really big one, especially because it is not an instant blinding flash. As you've talked about, it's a process with stages. Yes, yes. I kind of brought that blinding on myself, though, because I didn't, one day I was, I didn't want to practice patience. So I said, come on, just bring it all to me. And (laughs) they heard. So, so they started just slamming me with all kinds of stuff okay all these doors are opening up figure it out mm-hmm. yeah yeah and and one more quick question for for someone that might be might be might be experiencing something like this with a lot of new information coming at them and uh, it it can feel disorienting uh, possibly overwhelming depending on the number of things coming in, and one is often in the place of feeling like they have to recalibrate from day to day in order to continue functioning. What would you say to right. someone that's in that place right now? Oh my God. Journal, 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 journal. It okay. is so important because you can release a lot of stress and, um, that fear of the unknown, you can just release a lot of this stuff into your journal and then go back later and read it and watch how much sense it makes to you. Mm-hmm. Th- that is fun. If, if uh, uh, you know, if you as a listener have ever done that journal, gone back several months later, oh, yeah. it, it's, it can be quite, quite a pleasant experience. Yes, this is wonderful. Well, Sally, thank you so much for joining me here today. And a reminder for the listeners for information about the numerous services, including the raindrop therapy, which I keep coming back to. Uh, That sounds really cool. And this is Zen Lightenment. And the, the center is physically located in Allegan, Michigan. However, there are a number of services as Sally has described for us available online. So Sally, thank you so much for being my guest today. This has been a real pleasure. Well, thank you for having me and it was a pleasure. This has been Decide to Transform with my special guest, Sally De La Rosa. Be sure you get a hold of her, zenlightenment.live and find Sally and a Facebook group and page, Zenlightenment. Everybody have a great rest of your day and thank you so much for tuning in.